Yes, yes, yes. I do like Post Malone as well. This is his first album called Stony. Me and my brother really liked Post Malone at one point. I kind of fell off the wagon, the Post Malone wagon. But, I, you know, I do like his early material. It's like one of the only rappers I could actually kind of stand. This is the deluxe edition. I don't even remember where I even bought this. Post. Is there even anything? Yeah, there's a booklet. Yeah. It's probably one of those pain in the anus. Yeah, it is. Okay, hold on. A lot of modern CD releases do this, and I don't know why, but they fold out the lyrics into a poster. Which is cool if you want to frame it, but, you know, I don't do that. Really. Like, there's a picture of posts with the American flag. I'm just sitting there. He's got way more facial tattoos like than that these days. Which is fine, you know. I don't have a problem with it. It's got song credits. They're not lyrics. I'll show the disc. Which is an ashtray of cigarettes. Because you know Posty, he's smoking on those cancer cigs, or cancer sticks. Still does too. But, you know. Whatever. There's his second album. Which actually doesn't even have a cover. Kind of like what Post or, um, System of a Down did. Beer bongs of Bentleys, yeah. I vaguely remember when this came out too. That's really pretty decent too. PM2, I like that. It almost looks like it's supposed to be like a mixtape, which I like. I like that about it. Where's the other post album I have? No, that's something else. Someone else. Where is he? Oh, no. Here it is. This is... I forgot what... I wrote it inside, but this is his third album. This I really enjoy as well. I bought it in the store. In 2019... I haven't heard... This one I remember being really good. Oh, Hollywood's Bleeding. That's what it's called. I like the song he did uh, with Post Malone on this album. Which Ozzy later put on his album. I remember writing down... Or printing something off this. Yeah. I think I put it in the album. No, I guess I removed it. That's weird. I think, I, maybe my brother did. Yeah, see, he was starting to get more the facial tattoos. Which, again, whatever. You can do whatever if you want. Some, like, VHS photos. I think I printed something, and I just, like, wanted to, like, hear the songs. But they didn't list any of the songs or whatever. So I got kind of annoyed by that, and I printed, but I, so I guess I, they're just gone. I don't know. I need to reprint that. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Speaking of another musician I like, or singer, Billie Eilish, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Her first album from 2019? Yeah. Remember when it came out? Man, did Billie Eilish blow up. Like, <laughs> so I know someone's going to take that out of context or something. Uh, <laughs> no, but like her fame really blew up after this album. Because I remember when she was like 
pretty kind of known in the underground. And then with this album, it was just like, and Bad Guy came out, that was it. You should see me in the crown. All the good girls go to hell, which I remember if that was really good music video. Bury a friend. Oh, man. I wish I could have seen her during this time. There's the disc. I know there's a reissue with like bonus tracks. Is this the one? No, it's not. But I know she reissued it with like bonus tracks and stuff like that. I got this off Target, which I think actually has bonus tracks or something. And this does the same thing the friggin' Post Malone album does. But it's got a cool little poster of Billy. <laughs> Back when she wore those oversized coats. There's absolutely nothing whatsoever in the back but credits. I think there's actually stickers, I believe, in this. Yeah, there are. Hold on, let me get those out. Don't pay attention to that. That's going to be for something else. Here are the stickers. Which are still unused. I know some Billy Eilish collectors going to be like, You never used the stickers? I used those on my books. Pretty cool. Uh, rudimentary peni looking stickers which are pretty cool looking I heard Billy's gonna come out with a new album pretty soon so that'd be pretty cool what do we have here oh the offspring splinter I think my uncle gave this to me but it's like practically unplayable yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. I need to get another copy with the actual case and everything. But I like the Offspring; they're good. That was that must have been really played to death. I don't remember playing that much at all. Only Christina Aguilera album I'll, or CD I'll even own. Because I like the song, Genie in the Bottle. I like early Christine Aguilera. That's about it. I don't really care about her later stuff, honestly. But that's just me. I have a bootleg DVD of her music videos and like her some of her other stuff. But other than that, it, you know, I don't know much else from her. This we got. Oh, cool. Thanks for dropping that. Uh, what is this? Oh, here's a DVD. This is like a data disc of like rare Static X pictures I saved on the internet. I've been saving these pictures for like close to 10, 9, 10 years, something like that, from all over the internet. Yeah, I just. So I've been kind of saving those over the years. That's a backup. Here's the Beatles with Unreleased Masters. Uh, this is Volume 1, 1962, 1963, which is a weird looking picture of them. This is like one of the earliest Beatles bootlegs from 1989. I saw her standing there, take 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, I saw her staying there, take 11, track 2, and take 12. From me to you, take 1 and 2. So it's like really, really, really raw stuff that only like the f really diehard Beatles fans would like on Yellow Dog. Yeah, this is definitely a bootleg. But it was cheap. Kinda. Yeah. I do like the Beatles, so. The Beatles. What do you have here? 
Oh, this is a band called Anti-Socialite. And it's actually signed by the, all, all the band members. This is a pop punk band I got into at one point. I don't even know if they're still around anymore. I don't think so. But I, got, I bought that from them. It's really like, you know, bare bones as you can tell. Another Beatles CD. This is Rare Foes and Interview CD. It's numbered, number 48,421. Out of how many? I don't know. Yeah, this is volume one. Uh, oh, yeah. So it's like interviews recorded back in the early 60s, 63, 64. When it, this came out in 95. A label that wanted to cash in on Beatles stuff. But it was, it was cool for its time because it's like, this was pre-internet. They probably got a lot of these pictures from like, magazines or something and the interviews are kind of cool to listen to really poor quality though like that's a cool picture right there yeah I'm sh I'm 100% sh sure all these pictures are so common now but at the time they're like hey these are rare pictures, which at the time they probably were. Like, that's a cool pic of them at Sullivan. But now it's like, with the internet, everyone's like, Oh, I've seen that picture before. Yeah, I've seen that picture before. But, gotta have it. Speaking of the Beatles, and I don't know why my camera's like that. Beatles, Please Please Me. First Beatles album from 63. I saw her standing there. Please Please Me, Love Me Do, P.S. I Love You, Twisted Shout. And this has an enhanced ver This is the 2009 remaster. But this has Please 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 Me, Please Please Me, me documentary great debut album I hate the packaging though cuz it's like I get what I hate I like that the fact that it's um focus camera I like the fact that it's I think that's a yeah replicating the the album but at the same t time it's like I'll show you why I don't like it but these are cool pictures too very very early Beatles pictures now I'll show you the disc it's probably really scratched so bad Yeah, it's not there. Oh boy, that's a. It's got some gunk in that. I don't know where that came from. But there, there's the disc. But yeah, you have to slip that in and out. Some kind of some crap on that. Yeah, there's like right there. It's cool to have though, but it's really not the best version to get. Of, I mean, if, it's budget release. So, I mean, I think they even mentioned that in the case. Like it's like recyclable or something. Maybe. I don't know. I know some of the CDs were kind of like that back then. Bozo Bomb. The Yeasty Boys. Think of a clown punk band that covers normal punk songs and makes them and clownify them. That's what you get with this band. So you got Bozo Bomb, Holiday and Clown Bodia, Circus Producer, which is Sonic Producer. I got this for cheap, and you can't even find this album anywhere, save for one out video I uploaded. They, 
they were around. I remember. I never got to see them live they, before they broke up, but it's different. It was different, you know. It's, they were trying to do something new, and I appreciate that. Included for the kids. Yeah, right. Project Revolution Sampler. This has like a bunch of like bands. Let's see. Corn. Less the Jake. Funeral for a Friend. The Use. Shadows Fall. Snoop Dogg. Goldfinger. Lincoln Park. Helmet. Thrice. Jadakiss. Which who are all right. It's just like the sampler of the Project Revolution tour that happened, I think, in 04. I think I got this for maybe free. I'm holding on. Silver and gold. Uh, comp compression. It's actually signed by the entire band. and Really sloppy gold kind of... Uh, Sharpie. This is a Colorado rock band I saw live. I have a picture with me and them somewhere. They were really nice. There's the disc. But yeah, I remember... I don't even know if they're still around. I mean, I saw them, what, 2018 maybe? 19? I dug them a lot. Oh, these are a bunch of Static X bootlegs I put on discs. So, like, what is this? WYSP Studio. These are all on YouTube, by the way. House of Blues, Vegas. 1999 radio broadcast. Yeah, all these are on YouTube now. But at the time, I got them from the site, StackX, uh... Uh, bootleg site, or, uh, Czech Republic site? That had, like, StackX cool stuff, but that site hasn't been around in a long time. It's a shame, because that site had some really cool things, too. I downloaded a lot, and thankfully I did before... You know, got scrub scrubbed off the internet, but yeah. Speaking of Static X, Asesino, Corridos, Corridos de Muerte. This is a side project that the singer, the bassist of Static X, Tony, did with uh, Dino from Fear Factory. It's like real grindcore kind of death metal. Very different from Static X. In fact, this band actually opened for Static X. I think in the early 2000s. 2002, 2003. It's really good death metal, you know. And I'm not a uh, big death... I don't have much death metal in my collection, but... That's really good stuff. Yeah, Maldito X. That's Tony right there. I think as a member from Bougeria, very inspired by Bougeria. Asasino, that's Dino, I think. Yeah, very, very, just like, very murder. Yeah, I don't think I should show those pictures. Those are real pictures. But it's like very murder, kind of very like serious gang, kind of evil, kind of stuff. But I really like it. I know there's like a couple different versions of the Asesino stuff, but this is the, this is the original issue which I ha happen to have. Yeah, they're really good. Very, very raw and very, very vi heavier than Static X, definitely, that's for sure. And Fear Factory. Like, heavier than their Fear Factory's Death Metal stuff. Uh, 
Circle of Doom, there was a band that this, Mark Alden, yeah, I think my friend, cousin knows this guy. He was in a band called Lizardfish in the early 2000s in the San Diego area. And he put out this uh, album solo, which is like very, very, very kind of like typical run-of-the-mill heavy metal kind of stuff. It's one-man project, too. So he produced his, it, did all the guitars and vocals and stuff. It's not bad. And I like how they, he did the disc on, like, Lightscribe, which by 2010, not a lot of hell, hell of a lot of people were doing. But I find that kind of cool. I upload the Lizardfish stuff. I think you can find this album online. See, it's just, like, really, like, over-the-top, kind of, like, eh, like, heavy metal. It's ridiculous, but, you know. If you like that kind of stuff, you'll like it. I think it's on YouTube, like I said. I like the eye, you know. Here's the soundtrack to Austin Powers' The Spy Who Shagged Me. They had two volumes of the soundtrack. This happens to be volume one, which I really like. The Monkees, Steppenwolf, Bangles, Zombies, They Might Be Giants, The Guess Who. Even a freaking Lords of Acid song is in here, which is wild to me because they're like very like... They're kind of like um, Crystal Method, sort of. But like very sexual lyrics. Get in my belly. I like how it looks like a Spongebob kind of thing from Spongebob. Well, it came out the same year Spongebob premiered, so. This is my favorite Mike Myers movie. And it's actually my favorite Austin Powers movie of the trilogy. So, of course I had to get the soundtrack. If you haven't seen Austin Powers, what are you doing? Stop watching this video and go watch the Austin Powers movies. They are the best Austin Powers par or James Bond parody kind of films you will I think you'll ever see. And like I said, I do have volume two. I, I just I think I showed it, or I, I don't know if I have showed it or not. But yeah, I do have volume two as well. Jennifer Emery, this is a singer that I could never even find any info about her, but she put out this one C demo CD in 03 and disappeared. I think she has a family now because I remember uploading this on my other channel. And someone actually knew about this singer. It was like, oh, oh yeah, she um, she lived in L.A. for a while and then I don't know what ever happened to her. So, yeah. It's pretty decent, you know, music. It's like kind of like pop sort of stuff. What do we got here? Uh, songs from next Friday. Ice Cube You Could Do It featuring Mac-10 and Lil Zane with Money Stretch. I don't even own the soundtrack to this. But it's got the radio edit, instrumental of You Could Do It, and main mix and instrumental of Money Stretch. I do like next Friday, but soundtrack I remember kind of forgettable. This came out a year before the movie did. Three Stike Strikes, a new film by DJ Pooh. Have not seen that, but I do like DJ Pooh's movies. Oh no, th that was F. Gary Gray. That was who directed The First Friday. One of the rarest new metal CDs I own in my collection. And people have wanted this for a while. I've gotten offers from it and I declined each time because I'll never be able to find this again. But this is a band called Bunny. This is their album Chasing Roadrunner. 
I remember buying this on Amazon years ago because I really want to hear it. It's really, really good. Very raw. The vocalist has a very raw sound in his voice. I like the song Fireball. Love Turns. Taming the Tongue, which is actually the first song I heard from this that made me want to buy this. And the fact that the scans on Discogs are from this ex very exact copy. They never made an album after this, but some of the band members went on to do form another band that were kind of similar. I don't remember the name of them, but no. Yeah, check out Bunny if you really want some really cool new metal. I mean, this, you want to really talk about new metal. I mean, look at how they dressed with dreads. The hair spikes and stuff. It's exactly what you think. I, I don't remember where they, Oh, they're from Florida, I guess. That's cool. And if you, before you ask if you want... If I'm going to sell this copy... <laughs> yeah, but you're, on my, you're out of your mind. Unless if I find a double that's cheaper, maybe I'll sell this. I don't know. HR, you know, from uh, Bad Brains. This is his solo, like, reggae single, Rock of Enoch, released by SST and Rock of Enoch Part 2. It's just, like, a really long kind of song. It's like reggae, if you like that. Absolutely very much of a departure from the Bad Brains stuff. But then again, Bat Brains kind of did reggae in their songs too, so. I guess it's not that far fetched. But as far as like punk stuff, absolutely. Definitely far from it. Came out in 92. It was like a buck at a record store, and I like Bad Brains, so. Uh, uh, this is Kelly Osborne and Ozzy Osborne singing Changes, which is a really good cover of a Sabbath song. I know some people hate Changes. I like that song. Is it the best Black Sabbath song? Absolutely not in a million years, but it's still good. I like this version of it. I do like Kelly Osborne as a singer, even though she made like two albums. The Felix de Housecat dance mix. How do you make a dance mix out of that? That's like a slow song. And a live version of Dig, Dig Me Out. Uh, you either like Kelly Osbourne's music or you don't. <laughs> if you like kind of like... Pop punk from like the early 2000s, you like it. But, you know. I know some people don't like Kelly's voice, but I like it. I don't, I, I don't mind it. Live, she's okay, though. The only Smashing Pumpkin CD I own is the 1979 single, which has it's actually sort of more of an EP than an actual single. It's got 1979, Ugly, The Boy, Cherry, Believe, Set the Rate, Cherry. Yeah, and of course this album's from Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Good song. I like it. I know Smashing Pumpkins are still touring. It's nothing like this kind of material. I heard it's like kind of like more experimental. This is kind of like Sludge Rock uh, Mardo. I think I found it at a yard sale or something. One of the most electrifying records in years. Mark Rx, the Los Angeles Times. That doesn't matter. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you could be from whatever. Does it really sound good, though? I remember this band being kind of... Alright. <laughs> I think they put out an album. I think. My mom likes Aerosmith, so of course I had to have an Aerosmith comp. This is the second one I own. This is Big Ones. 
which for some reason someone cut off the sp spine off here. It's got like greatest hits or later songs. Like Dude Looks Like a What Lady, Jenny's Got a Gun. So it's like 80s to like mid 90s. Crazy, of course. If you like, it's not the best Aerosmith compilation to get. There's better ones out there, but if you are specifically looking for like 80s and 90s Aerosmith, you'll like them. You'll like this album. What is this? Rock your CD, rock your ROM video grit. <laughs> of course, the rock video moving puzzle game. So it's like a puzzle of a video? I don't know. What's that say? Oh, big ones. Yeah, you got Aerosmith merchandise. Yeah. I heard they're actually going on a farewell tour this year, and they're gonna call it quits. So. Kind of shame, but you know what? They've been going on for over 50 years, so they deserve the retirement. But then again, will they actually retire? We'll have to see. Is Lenny Kravitz, Are You Gonna Go My Way? Not the first Lenny Kravitz album, but the first one that got him big. This is the one that has Are You Gonna Go My Way? Which I was listening to another singer. His name is, uh, he's from a band called The Dwarves I really like. Uh, he has a song called Motorboating. And the guitar in that sounds so much like Are You Gonna Go My Way. It's, it's almost like, oh, let's kind of copy Are You Gonna Go My Way, but similar. I don't know if I kind of funny. But I do like Lenny Kravitz. I remember him especially from Guitar Hero on Tour. That's where I mainly know this from. I think my mom bought this, I want to say. Because I do like Lenny Kravitz, you know. He's not my favorite singer of all time, but yeah, I like him. Almost done. Black Sabbath, Master of Reality. Definitely a really heavy Sabbath song. Or Sabbath song. Well, uh, album, I should say. I mean, it's got Sweet Leaf, After Forever, Children of the Grave, you know, Lord of This World, Into the Void, which is such a freaking heavy. I mean, this is such a freaking heavy album for its time. In 1971, I mean, you think, like, man, this is this he music was this heavy then? Solitude's a great song, too. That doesn't even sound like Ozzy. It's funny. Solitude sounds like... I thought it was Bill Ward singing. But it's actually Ozzy. If, if, if that's the song I'm thinking of, I'm pretty sure. It's like you close your eyes when you listen to that song. And it's just like... You imagine you're in like a music video. It's wild. I know I'm like talking like a hippie, but it's true. I know this is um, Sean Count Blagareth's favorite Sabbath album, and it's definitely up there for me. I really like it. I need to get the deluxe edition with the extra tracks. And here's the first album. Uh, you know, everyone's heard this. This is a, eight, uh, I think, an early 90s reissue from America, which doesn't even... I like the UK track listing better. Like, I like the um, British track listing, but, I, you know, or uh, American track listing, but I don't know. Which had an evil woman. Yeah, for some reason, 
they replaced it due to copyright, but I heard there's a deluxe edition which has both those songs, so I might as well get that. Got this at FYE a long time ago. And there's the inside. Again, not my favorite Sabbath album. I think my favorite, honestly, is... I don't know. I have to think about that. Probably either Paranoid uh, or Volume 4, probably. Uh, what do we got? We're almost done. Here's a band called one of my favorite New York punk bands ever, the Luna Chicks. This is their second, I've showed this before, this is like my second copy on CD. I have two copies on CD, two copies on vinyl. This is like a second pressing on CD. This is their album Binge and Purge. You know, great punk rock from the early 90s. It's not my favorite though. My favorite is Baby Sears on Acid, which I think I showed. But I like the song Apathetic, Binge and Purge, Super Strong, which is the only song sung by Becky Reck, their drummer. This is the last song uh album that she was on before she got fired from the band. Too Bad for You, Kill, PS Hell. A lot of BS. Great album. Uh, I know people have compared this album to It's Like Baby Sears and Acid Part 2, which is sort of true. Kind of not. I know some of these songs they played live during the Baby Sears and Acid era, but they didn't record during until this yeah that's a great great album probably my second favorite album from them no maybe third and here's their most recent album Luxury Problem released in 1999 by this point they were really poppy it's kind of like pop punk. It's not bad, but they definitely, ch I mean, if you look, they look so different from the first, it's like, that's, where's Theo? There's Theo then, eyebrows and stuff. And that's Theo after, that's actually kind of what she looks like now. And then, where is it, Gina, here's Gina. There's uh, Sydney or Squid, and there's Squid and Chip. I like this album. It's is it? I mean, if it's more poppy, I will admit, but it's still really good. Uh, say what you mean. It's great. Luxury problem. Uh. Knuckle Sandwich is a great heavy song. Down at the Pub. I know they're possibly going to make another album, which is actually really cool. I know the Japanese edition has um, a Blondie cover, but I don't have that version. But yeah, if you like uh, some New York punk. With chicks, check out the Luna Chicks. It's a weird looking painting. That's actually done by Gina, yeah. Gina, right there. I highly recommend Luna Chicks. They're all, all their albums are really good in one way or another. But their older albums, in my opinion, were probably the best. Alright, almost finished. The Pretty Reckless, the only ECD I even own by this band. And there's a, a reason why. 
first off, this CD is pretty kind of hard to find, come by since they got big. This is when they were signed to Interscope in 2010. It has the song Zombie. They're like alt rock. And they're really good. Taylor Momsen used to be an actress. In fact, you would know her from Cindy Lou in The, Gr the Grinch. Uh, it's from Jim Carrey. The cool thing about this, though, is that it's actually signed by everyone, including, including Taylor. Now, I got this at a record store, so I can't really authenticate these signatures, but from what I've seen, and there's the disc... It looked pretty legit. You know? So I have Taylor's autograph. That's cool. That's a really cool poster, too. I like that pose.